of God uh, is eternal life. Uh, you got to repent of all your sins. Amen. He may not come in the manner that you want him to come, but when he does come, when he does show up, amen, it's exactly what we need, and it's always right on time. Why don't you clap your hands and tell God thank you this afternoon. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Amen. That, that is the dilemma, thank God, that, that we find ourselves in from time to time. Amen. And I believe that, that most of us, as a matter of fact, that I would go out on a limb and say all of us, thank God, would be better off. Amen. If we heeded wise counsel, thank God, even when it was uncomfortable for us. Amen. I come to let you know that sometimes salvation becomes a little bit uncomfortable. Can I get a witness in this house? Amen. Sometimes being saved, thank God. Do I have anybody that's been, thank God, in places of discomfort? Amen. Sometimes being saved causes you discomfort. Amen. Sometimes truth hurts. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. But Amen. But every now and then you've got to be told the truth even when it does not jive with what you want to hear. Amen. Because God is not concerned with what we want to hear. Amen. God is not concerned, thank God, with the feelings of our flesh. He's not concerned with our emotions. Amen. God wants us to be saved. And if being saved costs us, thank God, a level of comfort then you ought to have a mind that says so be it. Amen. Of being saved, can I get a witness in this church today? Thank God of being saved. Thank God costs us. Amen. Tears. Thank God if it costs us pain. Amen. You ought to say so be it. Whatever price I've got to pay for God to save my life. Amen. You ought to throw up your hands and say I'll take it all Jesus. Can I get a witness in here? You ought to clap your hands and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you. Another time, discomfort. Sometimes salvation causes us discomfort. Amen. It causes, thank God, a level of discomfort that, that makes us uneasy. Amen. That causes us at times, Brother Swim, amen, to want to throw in the towel. Amen. To stay away with this life. Amen. It causes us Thank God, Brother Jeff, amen, sometimes to want to turn our back on God because they did not tell me that, that salvation involved all of this. They did not tell me, Brother Sean, that, that being saved was, was going to cost me, thank God, some of the stuff that I've been used to. They did not tell me that some people, amen, that, that I used to run with, that I couldn't run with them no more. They did not tell me that, that some relationships I had to cut off and move on. Thank God they did not tell me that, that I would have to fast and, and put my body on a fast. Thank God to bring my emotions under God's control. They did not tell me, thank God, that sometimes I'd fall down and scrape my knees. Thank God when I'm trying to run for Jesus. Oh yeah, I heard the songs on Sunday morning that I'm running for Jesus a long time. Amen. And I'm not tired yet. Amen. They did not tell me that sometimes you would get tired. That sometimes you would want to throw in the towel. They did not tell me that sometimes that truth would hurt. Amen. But what they did tell me, amen, is that God would always be there in the good times and in the bad times. Can I get a witness in this church today? You ought to clap your hands and tell God thank you. Tell him, tell him thank you another time. Amen. How many know that God has been there? Amen. All the time. You, you, ought to, you, you ought to shake a neighbor's hand and say, neighbor. Amen. God has been there all the time. Amen. He wasn't there just, just when everything was clicking and I was on the mountain top and I had all the money I wanted and things were going well. He was not just there, but I come to let you know, even in the valley, amen, even when you got to your lowest point, amen, almost level to the ground, I want you to know that God is there too. Can I get a witness in this church today? David said, if I make my bed in hell, God is there. 
if I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the earth, God is there. I want you to know, amen, even though you might have sunk to the bottom of the sea, even though you may have made shipwreck, I come to tell you that God is there with you. And if you would just heed his instruction, if you would just listen to wise counsel, he will bring you back to life. Amen. No matter how far you have gone, amen, no matter how far you have shared, if you are heed instruction, God will bring you back to life, but you gotta listen to him. You wanna clap your hands and tell God, thank you. Tell him thank you another time. Can I get a witness in this church? Anybody know how to listen? Amen. We, we are short supply. Thank God a folk that are willing. Thank God to humble themselves and he instruction and wise counsel. Amen. Take your seat for a second. I'm almost through. And that's what we see. Thank God in this 27th chapter of the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. The Bible lets me know. Amen. That there was, thank God, a band of soldiers who were escorted. Thank God, some, some prisoners, if you will. Amen. The Bible tells me that they purposed in their heart. We're going to get to our destination. Amen. But the Bible lets me know. Amen. That one of those prisoners was a man by the name of Paul. Amen. They didn't really realize uh, who they had on board. Uh, they didn't realize uh, uh, that they had somebody uh, that had his, that God had his hand on. Uh, that's why you shouldn't be too quick. Uh, thank God to dog folks out. Uh, because you never know. Uh, the one you are dogging out uh, might be the one who God has his hand on. That's another sermon. But, but the Bible lets me know. Uh, amen. That there's a purpose in their heart. Uh, Amen. That Paul rose up. Uh, thank God in the verse number 12. Uh, or in verse number. Thank God 10. Uh, he rose up uh, and told the men. Uh, I perceive. Uh, amen. That we shouldn't go out today. Uh, but if we do. Uh, it's going to be a lot of hurt. Uh, but the Bible tells me. Uh, that the owners of the ship. Uh, the captain at the ship uh, said whatever Paul uh, we gonna do uh, what we got to do uh, I'll come to let you know uh, whenever you don't listen uh, to the man of God uh, your life will be made shipwreck uh, can I get a witness in this church uh, I believe I told you a couple weeks ago uh, that you can look at uh, every tragedy in your life. Uh, you can look at every mistake. Uh, uh, amen. All the times that you've been made shipwreck uh, in your life. Uh, uh, and you can trace it uh, uh, to an instruction that you receive uh, uh, that you ignore. Uh, uh, you can trace all of your trouble uh, uh, to ignoring uh, uh, wisdom and wise counsel. Uh, uh, that's why the Bible a writer said in the book of Proverbs that in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Amen. God is not a God of coincidence. Whatever he speaks to you there's a reason why God is saying what he's saying. As a matter of fact there's a reason why you are in church today. There's a reason why there's a reason. You might not think of it, but there's a reason. There's a reason why you are here and not somewhere else. Because God has something and he wants to tell you today. And the Bible let me know. I'm headed to my seat, but, but the Bible lets me know that they ignored Paul's instruction and they set out to arrive at their destination. And then the Bible tells me uh, that they experienced 
trouble. Ah, but Paul, stay quiet. Because sometimes when folk don't want to listen, you got to let them find out the hard way. Can I get a witness in this church? Clap your hands and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you another time. Amen. When folk don't want to listen, you got to let the devil beat them up some. When folk don't want to listen, you got to let them get down so low. Amen. Just like that prodigal son. Y'all don't hear me this morning. Amen. He had it made. Had his inheritance. Living at home. Didn't have no bills to pay her. But the Bible tells me that he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And he took all of his money and he went out partying. He took all his money. He spent it on women. I don't know if they had drugs back then or not. But he took all of his stuff and he wasted it all away because he wanted to do what he wanted to do. And there is trouble to follow when you do what you want to do and go against God. But I thank God today that the story of the prodigal son did not end with this party and his riot is living. Because the Bible tells me that way by and by he came to himself. Amen. When he was eating with the pigs, when he was eating with the dirt, when he was growling in the mud, when it couldn't get no worse for the Bible let me know that he came to himself. What did he do? He had an ear to listen. And the Bible tells me that way by and by, after these men became shipwrecked, even after they had almost lost Thank God everything We pick it up In verse number 21 You ought to clap your hands And shout glory Shout glory Another time We pick it up In verse 21 I hear you Jesus Amen That after long abstinence Paul sat back And watched it go down And I want you to know today When you don't listen We will watch you We'll sit back and watch you We'll watch you go down And then we'll pray that God uh, will save you uh, before it's too late. Uh, I'll come to let you know. Uh, can I take a quick pause to thank God uh, for some, because somebody prayed for me. Uh, I can't get no help up in this church, but, but I thank God uh, because my life should have been shipwrecked. Uh, amen. I should have went under, uh, but I thank God uh, because somebody prayed for me. Uh, you ought to thank God today uh, because you should have went under. Uh, but I come to let you know uh, that you are here today uh, because somebody prayed for you. Uh, clap your head and shout glory. Uh, somebody pray. Uh, give a neighbor high five uh, and ask him, did you pray for me? Uh, Y'all ain't doing it. Uh, but give somebody a high five. Uh, Say, did you pray for me? Now tell them, say, yes, sir. I've been praying for you because God told me to pray. Hey, man, I don't know what's going on with you, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession with groanings and utterance. The Holy Ghost knows, even when the saints don't know, God knows, and you are here because we pray. For you uh, have your hand and shout glory. Uh, shout glory another time. Uh, amen. He stood up. Uh, I'm told the man uh, he didn't stood up. Uh, he didn't stand up. 
up and say, see, I told you. You should have done what I told you to do. But he stood up and told the men, if you had to listen to me, you wouldn't have made shipwreck. Oh, but I'm going to pray for you. As a matter of fact, I've been praying. And not only have I been talking to God, but God been talking to me. What did he tell you, Brother Paul? Thank you. I'm so glad you asked. The angel of the Lord stood by me and he told me, I got a plan for you. What did he say? In verse number 24, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. Amen. In other words, you got to live because I got a plan for you. You ought to clap your hand and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you. Another time, shake your neighbor's head for the second time today and tell him, say, neighbor, you can't die because God has a plan for your life. I can't get no help up in here. You can't go under because God has a plan for your life. That's why the Bible says you must be brought before Caesar. And verse number 26, we must be cast on an island. You know what that tells me? No matter what comes, no matter how deep I sink, if God said you got to live, there ain't nothing the devil can do to take me out of here. You must live. And I pause to tell somebody you ought to have that kind of mind. I got to make it. God has ordained I make it. God has made me a promise. I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me. I got to make it. Come hell or high water. I got to make it. Clap your head and shout glory. Shout glory another time. I'm headed to my seat. But the Bible tells me that they made shipwreck. And they were out there. They got in the sea. The ship was all broken up. Have you ever felt like your life was broken up? Clap your hand and see it. Have you ever felt uh, that things uh, didn't make sense? Uh, I had it all, but it all left me. I had it my stuff together, but things just fell apart. But the Bible tells me that the centurions, uh, when the ship was broken, uh, they had a mind uh, to kill all the prisoners uh, and then kill themselves. Uh, but the Bible tell me that Paul spoke up and said, God had made me a promise and you got to live when God had made you a promise. You got to live. Can I get a witness? And the Bible tells me that even though the ship was broken up, some of them made it on broken pieces and I come to tell you your life may have been shattered and things may have may have gone down but God told me to tell you grab on to some broken pieces grab on to what you got left hold on to what you got left if all you got is prayer hold on to your prayer if all you got is your faith hold on to your faith if 
if all you got is your testimony, hold on to your testimony. Clap your hand. Give him glory. Clap your hand. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Making it on broken pieces. If God has made you a promise, you can't go anywhere until the promise has come to pass. Because God is not a liar. And his word will not return unto him void. In other words, if he sends his word for a specific purpose, his word will achieve that purpose. And if God says something is going to happen, then you can rest assured that it will happen. Regardless of how you get there, regardless of what happens on the way, regardless of even on the way it looks like it's not going to happen, for the fact that God said you got to get there means that you will get there. You just got to trust him on the way. Can I get a witness in here? Sometimes things will fall apart on the way. Sometimes as those men, they got into the ship and the ship was all together, but by the time they got to their destination, they didn't know that some of them would be swimming to the shore. They didn't know that others of them would be hanging on to broken pieces of the ship. But it's not how you get there. It's the fact that God said you will get there and you will. Can I get a witness in here? It pays. It pays to listen to the man of God. And guess what? It costs to not listen to the man of God. It's a very simple concept. The Bible says that a wise son heareth the instructions of a father. Still learning that. Many times that is an underpinning of your own personal wisdom. Wisdom does not say I know it all and I don't need any advice. Wisdom says my ear is still open. There's some things I can still pick up. There's some things that God still wants to tell me through the man or the woman of God. Egoism says, I know it all. Egoism says, I got it all together. Just like those men ignore the instruction of the Apostle Paul. In so many words, what do you know, Paul? You've never been a sailor before. Perhaps if it had been Peter, James, or John who were trained fishermen, perhaps they would have listened. In so many words, Paul, what do you know? You've never been out in sea before. You're an intellect. You went to the finest schools. You made tents. You don't know anything about sailing. Sometimes you may say, well, the man of God, the pastor doesn't know anything about my line of work. Or the pastor doesn't know anything about these streets. Or the pastor doesn't know anything about the fact that it's hard out here for a pimp. He doesn't know anything about this, this easy money. God knows, even if the man of God has not had personal experience with it, God knows. And he uses the man of God as the conduit by which he tries to save your life. But it's up to us to listen. When we listen, it pays. 
when we don't, it costs. And then God has to come in just like he did for these men and save their lives just in the nick of time because of his commitment to Paul. God told me to tell you today, you got to have a mind that I've got to make it no matter what it may cost me. Heaven is cheap at any price. Being saved is the best life might not be the easiest life. It will be a life full of challenges, a life full of sacrifice, a life that requires you are given to prayer, a life that requires you be given to fasting, a life that requires you to be somebody that you weren't, that you've never been before. You can't, a life that may require you to look differently. A life that requires you to speak differently. A life that requires you to act differently. But I come to tell you, whatever the price you have got to pay to have this life and to have the next life, that price will be cheap compared to what God has in store for you. Do I have any witnesses in here? God told Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. In other words, I've got a plan for you. And there is no greater consolation for a child of God than to know that God has a plan for your life. Because he does. He has a plan for each and every one of us in this room today. You might not believe it. You may have looked at your own life and said, I'm nothing. You may, you may know your, your family history. You may say, I lack pedigree. I lack skills. I can barely read. I can't have talk. I got halitosis, whatever your issue is. You may look at yourself and say, I, I am nothing. But God doesn't see who we are per se. He sees who we can become in him. And he sees what we are and then gives us what we need so that we can go beyond what we are and get to where he wants us to be. Because God has a plan for us. It is God that, Paul said it like this, it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God works on us so that we can know his will. And works on our will until his will becomes our will. Until his desires become our desires. Until his plan becomes our plan. And then he works with us, works in, he both works, work, works both to will and to do. Then he works with us the ability to do his will. He works with us the ability to carry out his plan for God has a plan for your life he has a destination for your life he has the vehicle by which you will get there he knows the journey and the direction so you've got the vehicle the road and the destination all taken care of all you got to do is get in the car can I get a witness in here and don't get in the driver's seat Get in the passenger seat. <laughs> Sometimes when me and my wife leave the house, I will run to the passenger seat because I don't want to have to drive. I'll, <laughs> I could be gone all week driving all across the state of Michigan, Sault Ste. Marie, Traverse City, you know that song that says, I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. East Coast, United, uh, the state of Michigan, Western Michigan, from Lake Michigan to Lake Huron to Lake whatever. Get home after a long week, tired. My wife says, ah, we need to go to the store. I said, all right, I'll go. And she get in the passenger. I've been driving all week. I, you want me to drive? 
But all you got to do is get in the car and don't get in the driver's seat. Let God drive your life. You get in the passenger seat, buckle up. It might be a bumpy ride. As Johnny James said in my clothes, he's never promised us a, a smooth journey, but he has promised us a safe landing. If you ride with God, he will take care of your life. I got to make it. God bless you. You say amen. Amen. We got to make it. We have everything that we need to make it. All we have to do is have our minds made up to be determined uh, that we're going to make it. God is on our side. He's for us. If God be for us, he's more than what? The whole world against us. He is for us. So if there's anybody who wants to be saved, amen, I've got to be 